Okay, boys and girls, today we are taking a look at some awesome older blade designs that I think are worth checking out and even buying if you get the opportunity. Now, full disclosure, not all of the blades we mentioned in today's video are available readily, but a lot of these blades with a little bit of uh, Google or eBay use can be found and purchased. Whether they are new or used, they are all pretty awesome. So, as always, please don't forget to comment, like, share, and subscribe so you can see more awesome last content just like this. Okay, let's jump into it. So the first one, and probably the crowning jewel, if you will, of the old knife designs that you should check out has to be, for me, the Mora Companion, or if you're really old school, the Mora Clipper. Now this one right here is the Mora Clipper, and you can tell by the handle design and the handle color, all the clippers, aside from the like Baco collaboration ones, where this kind of off orange or reddish orange with this diamond grip and I actually really like this old style grip the other thing you'll be able to tell hopefully from the video is that it will just say Mora instead of the Mora knife or Mora Neve kind of uh, updated branding so this one is a classic clipper and the other difference between the clippers and the companions is that the tang it goes about halfway to the handle either way though the clipper or the companion are really cool blades and the clipper itself has been around for many decades and is a very fantastic very well proven blade so we're going in size so we're going up in size just a little bit here and this one is one that is luckily still pretty available and you can buy brand new and this is the Topps Fieldcraft. Now admittedly there are some definite weaknesses to the Topps Brothers of Bushcraft Fieldcraft but overall this is a very well-rounded blade and I think for the majority of bushcrafters and even just wilderness campers, hikers and such that exist in the world this is a pretty good option not to mention that the Fieldcraft comes in a stainless version as well as the 1095 version and it comes in many different handle variations some are g10 some are micarta like this one and overall you can get this thing in a few different flavors now it isn't necessarily my most favorite due to the jimping and uh, the fact that you have to kind of grind the spine down to make a strike ferro rods and a handful of other modifications that you have to make but overall the tops fieldcraft is a extremely comfortable very useful bushcrafting knife so I highly recommend checking this older design out when talking about older tools or older blades that are still awesome is the Cold Steel SRK. Now admittedly I have not tried out the rebranded or new Cold Steel SRKs but from what I can tell they seem to be just fine. I might actually have to pick one up just to do some split testing with it but by and large the Cold Steel SRK is a knife that has been around and seen multiple iterations in general generations of the tool. It's been around since at least the 90s, but I think the 80s, and it is a really solid, really classic staple for survival practice, for search and rescue. That's how the name of the knife came about, search and rescue knife. Uh, this is a really great general purpose kind of field blade. Now, it's not the best for bushcrafting specifically, but if you're looking for a reasonably budget alternative for survival knives, this one is extremely hard to beat and so this one as an older design is very well proven it has an excellent track record whether you get it in OS 8 whether you get it in whether you get it in OS 8 whether you get it in SK5 high carbon or Sanmai CPM 3V any of the iterations will serve you very well though I will say I think CPM 3V would be a pretty pretty awesome steal for the SRK so definitely a worth while check out if you're looking for a reasonably budget survival and field knife in general. Now jumping into probably the most contentious of the offerings. Uh, this is one that you're either going to love or hate, but it is a blade design that has been around for a long time. So I felt every once in a while I like to pull out the tops Tom Brown tracker to talk about it. Now this is one that 
is very hard to exactly categorize. Is it a good knife for survival? Uh, potentially. It, it is definitely a very unique tool and I think one of my commenters summed, summed it up very well that this is a really great tool that you use to make other tools and uh, in that application this is a very unique option that you can use in survival situations. I don't think this is necessarily a great bushcrafting blade just because it's very thick, has this weird, you know, kind of saw back notching thing, and it's not very inherently designed for bushcrafting tasks, but for survival tasks. This thing is surprisingly better than most people give it credit. This thing actually is pretty darn good at doing many different things, such as building shelters, creating traps, uh, and even starting fires, you know, this thing really is not as bad as some people will make it make it out to be, but it is definitely a very odd tool, and if you do end up running or picking up a Tom Brown tracker in its either smaller or standard size, it's definitely a tool that you have to learn how to use, but once you learn how to use the tracker, it will actually serve you pretty well in the field, so it is not a horrible option. It is definitely a unique tool and I love keeping it around because it is so different than every other tool or every other knife that I have in the collection. So this is the Topps Tom Brown Tracker. This is the standard size. They also make a smaller one, but this is another older design that is also pretty worthwhile checking out if you are a more experienced bushcrafter or wilderness uh, kind of self-reliance person and you're looking to uh, try something unique and new. Okay, so this next one is probably definitely one of my favorites on the list and very similar to the Topps Tom Brown Tracker. This is the Buck Ron Hood or Hood's Woods uh, Thug and this thing is a very unique multi-purpose tool that is I think a little bit more than just a knife or a big knife. Of course this is a larger knife and I'll grab the uh, more uh, companion or clipper in this case to show you guys that this is a pretty big blade as you can see there. This is not a super small knife but what it really does allow for being this large and having this kind of uh, kukri styled curvature is it really allows you to use this blade in a lot of different ways. Of course the handle in and of itself similar to the tracker is you are able to either choke up on it, get a nice close grip to the blade, or even choke back, all the way back, and to kind of chop with the blade. Now admittedly, the Thug is not the best chopper, but in the ways that you can hold this knife and use it, it really allows you to utilize this blade in many different capacities to fill different roles, whether you're trying to compensate for not having a machete or a hatchet, or you're trying to just simply use this knife as a draw knife to plane down some wood and uh, make a shelter or build a trap or something along those lines. This blade is a extremely versatile blade and this one being that it's made out of 5160 spring steel it is super robust it literally bounces back and uh, you can really beat the heck out of this thing abuse the heck out of it and it will always come back for more. So the Buck Thug unfortunately is a discontinued blade but being that Buck made quite a few of them they are not super hard to find they do come up fairly frequently on places like eBay or even if you just go through Google and search different knife outlets or if you go to the blade forums on Facebook or even just blade forums online you can end up tracking down a buck thug and even if you do end up getting one that looks kind of like mine you know pretty used pretty abused this blade is still very sharp and being that like I said it is 5160 it is a very tough blade so you're not probably going to see you know blade tips broken off or you know massive amounts of damage done to even used thugs because they are very resilient and very tough. Not to mention the other cool fact of the thug is that these handles are pretty easy to remove so what I actually ended up doing in this one is I put some spare paracord and a ferro rod actually inside the handle so that it has a little tiny survival kit if you will has some cordage and combustion added to the cutlery in it. So 
I know that every year there's a ton of knives that come out that are new and they're cool and they're made out of you know exciting materials or they are at a certain budget price that is appealing but at the same time a lot of cool older knives also exist and I definitely think they're worth checking out so hopefully you guys enjoyed the video as always God bless and I'm out